So let us find out how the presence of the strong ammonium chloride salt in the solution is going to affect the dissociation of a weak base like ammonium hydroxide. Now why I have taken these two examples, now, there is a reason. They have a common ammonium ion. Now when this weak base the, with, the, with the ammonium ion is added in presence of the strong electrolyte or strong salt ammonium chloride which has already as we have, has undergone a complete dissociation and this is the expression of the weak base is what we find is since there is already a large concentration of ammonium ion present in the solution the reaction quotient for this will be very large why because this ammonium ion concentration will include this ammonium ion concentration which has obtained from the salt as well as which has been obtained from this base so this Q will be very large than your normal K equilibrium or the KB. Since your Q will be very large, it means what it is, the, the system will move towards the, is now in the forward direction, it will move back. It will move back in order to compensate or to bring this Q back again to equal to the K equilibrium or the KB. So what will happen is this dissociation of this weak base gets suppressed. It will move back. This is what you have learned in your chemical equilibrium chapter part as per the Lee-Chandler's principle. So it is the large concentration of ammonium ions which, which, which pushes this equilibrium to go back and this is how the dissociation of ammonium hydroxide gets affected. And what we find is that the, the dissociation of the weak base gets what? Again, what? Reduced due to the presence of the common ions from a strong electrolyte. This is what is called common ion effect. So what is common ion effect is suppression in, the, suppression in the dissociation of weak electrolyte in the presence of a strong electrolyte having common ions is called common ion effect. The same is used in your salt analysis for identifying the cations of the second group. We know, let, us, let me give you a brief idea about this. In, in your cationic analysis, We know group 1 has dilute HCl as the group reagent and we have mainly the lead and the silver ions included in this and we have group 2 which is having copper, mercuric, we have cadmium, we have arsenic, we have antimony and we, we have lead also because that also gets precipitated out as a sulphide. The group reagent is your H2S gas. Now H2S gas is a weak acid, weak electrolyte added in presence of strong HCl acid. So what happens is, since these two have common H plus ions, the dissociation of H2S gets suppressed. Why we are suppressing the dissociation of the H2S gas? Because here we need very small amount of the sulphide ions which will be sufficient enough to precipitate out only the group 2 cations. We also know group 4 is also having H2S gas as the group reagent where your cations are zinc, manganese, cadmium, and cobalt, uh, sorry, cobalt and nickel. And, and the uh, solubility product of your group 4 cations is larger than or higher than the group 2 cations. Since there, the, uh, the solubility product of these ions is less, they need lesser quantity of the sulphide ions. So, this H2S therefore is suppressed, the dissociation of this H2S is suppressed by deliberately adding it in the presence of HCl. So that only small amount of sulphide is able to be generated out in the solution which is sufficient enough to precipitate out only the group 2 cations and not the group 4 cations. So this is what is your common ion effect is and it has a lot of applications. It is specially discussed here in order to explain the dissociation of polyprotic acids or the, for, for the polyacidic uh, bases which are giving us more than one OH minus ions. Let us discuss 
these are in, uh, in detail. Now, let us take the dissociation of rather to write a dissociation constants of poly protic acids. Polyprotic means which are giving us more than one H plus ion. Let us take the example of sulfuric acid. We know it will give us first H plus ion and it will form H SO4 minus ion. This will be involving its first dissociation constant. Then your this HSO4 minus will again dissociate and it will give you one more H plus ion along with your sulfate ion and this will be involving the second dissociation. So, the first release of the H plus ion is, is expressed as Ka1 which is called its first dissociation constant and the release of the second H plus ion is expressed in the form of a Ka2 which is also called the second dissociation constant. Now, what we find is this will be your comparatively weak acid and it has this H2SO4, a strong acid, which has already gone under the, dis which has already shown the dissociation. There is already a large H plus ions concentration. These two common ions makes what? Make this to go back by what? By common ion effect. So that is why what we find is the value of the second dissociation constant will be far less the first one. I am repeating again. Both these dissociation have a one common ion H plus ion. And since the first one will be having a very large value, because of this large H plus ion concentration, the dissociation of second dissociation gets suppressed. That is why always the second dissociation constant is far, far less than the first dissociation constant. And what we say is, the dissociation constants or the values of the subsequent dissociation constants are always becoming smaller or lesser and lesser. Therefore, if we have suppose the example of the other like phosphoric acids, H3PO4, it will be having Ka1, Ka2, Ka3. Always remember this Ka1 will be very, very large than Ka2, which will be again very, very larger than Ka3. So, the values of the subsequent dissociation constants keep on decreasing and decreasing. Main reason is common ion effect.